first films I ever worked on, you would hear as film mag reels spooled. Everything was on tape. There were no demos. The composer would write a theme, play it to the director on the piano, and then they would go away. And the first time the director would hear the score, it would be when it was played. One, two, three, four. And then the score would arrive. My name is Simon Franklin. I'm a film composer. We're here at Air Studios, which is my home from home and the greatest place to make music in the world, as far as I'm concerned. A piece of hardware has to make my life easier, or it actually has to make my creative process better. And the thing about the new keyboard is that my creative process is improved and it is faster and actually hits both of those marks. If I could only have one thing, I'd have to have contact. That's my desert island thing because I can pretty well do anything I want inside contact if I have to. My setup has 500 contacts in it because my interaction with contact needs to be fast. Contact being directly accessible makes this so much more useful. I think that the new control is a superb keyboard. I'm very, very pleased by what version three has brought for us. My back history includes Avatar 1 as lead arranger. My most recent film was Avatar The Way of Water and I'm continuing to work on the sequels now. I worked on Titanic, I did uh, Seven, I did the electronic synths on that. I uh, worked with The Weeknd, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Madonna, Tony Braxton, Celine Dion, obviously, because I produced My Heart Will Go On for the film Titanic. I used to do a lot of records, now I just do films. In the world of composing, I think I trust transition to it because I was a session musician. The idea of being a sideman and then coming into film composing, I think is a natural role change for many of us. John Barry was a huge influence on me in terms of understanding the way that you work with a theme and picture. I remember we were working on Prince of Tides and he wrote this beautiful theme. He would spend weeks making sure that this theme was just right. And that idea of a central theme that could be the heart of a film is something that many of the people I've worked for is something that I've taken from them. First films I ever worked on, there was this black box that was the composer and the director waited to find out what was inside. And if you're lucky, it's great. If you're unlucky, then there's weeks of rewrites because all the music was still being written out by hand. I've witnessed the transition you know on titanic i was making demos effectively where they stuck they ended up in the film there was some money to get some orchestra on it but most of that score is synthetic the concept was that jim could hear what was going to happen in the score so that was my first experience of jim cameron that was an unusual thing which was to have full demos of an orchestral cue that obviously is now the norm so I'm at the NAMM show, early 2000s maybe, and there is a tiny table in the corner that says Native Instruments, and they have this beta disc for Contact 1.0, which was a floppy disc. Contact was transformative. Remember, I came from the Synclavier, which was a sampler that had 32 megabytes of RAM that cost $300,000, but there wasn't a great sampler out there. Suddenly I could layer samples, I could put them and I could choose and I could group them, I could trigger them using key switches and so on. I can't say all of that was in 1.0, but I was there at the very, very beginning, amazed by what I could do. I look at synthesizers as being very much a fifth section of the orchestra. One of the things that I do do is I layer. When it comes to film and we're dealing with 714 and Atmos and so on, you then also need more layers to give you sense of depth. Because I came from records, because I did a lot of hip hop, you know, R&B, I'd say rhythmically, my drum work is also something that I think people have noted. I always believe that if you get head bob, that starts the audience on a right path with the piece of music. Then it's about getting that interest. I don't program in loops because I started with the Synclavier, which didn't have a cut and paste sequencer. If I was doing the hi-hat to unbreak my heart, I had to play it from the beginning to the end. And I would play it and gradually I'd add more open hats, I'd do things, but it would be a part, I would be playing it. 
trying to make something that evolves with the picture. Native Instruments make some fabulous things. And there's some hidden gems inside the factory library that I think people forget about. Probably got 20, 30 pianos, but Noir is in my core template. I love the Straylight and Ashlight libraries. I think they're really cool and interesting. I like things that I can manipulate and I can tweak. You go through all the drum libraries like Damage 2, which has got some fabulous stuff in it. It's not about playing a preset and holding your finger down. It's about then taking that and saying, right, how can I make it my own? How can I make it so that it works against the picture? And then what happens if I layer this sound with that sound? I haven't needed a new keyboard for a long time as much as I needed this one. Tim Adner, who is the sort of lead man for the keyboard, is an old friend of mine. We started talking a few years ago because the lead time on building some of this is several years. He showed me, you know, literally a piece of paper. Hey, we're thinking about doing this. And I would look at it and go, yeah, but one of the things that I worked with Tim Adnett on was getting four pedal inputs because I have a multiple pedal board for the normal sustain pedal, but I also have pedals for mod and expression. And then I use a fourth pedal as a drop-in. Most of the orchestral libraries that we use these days use mod for dynamics and they use expression for volume. And I like being able to tweak them both with my feet as I'm going on. The other thing was the strip's great. I like the strip, but it was just in the wrong place because your heel would touch it. Whenever you use the mod wheel, you use the pitch bend. Version three, I think, is phenomenal. The day I got it, I got rid of my CP300, and that's the first time that something has absolutely supplanted it. I love the polytouch. Having that on an 88-note keyboard really makes a huge difference to expression. The computer inside it is much more than just a screen. The speed with which I can change things and transform things, the way I can audition stuff, it's fabulous, but I also love the layout allowing contact to appear on the screen and the keyboard makes all the difference in the world. You're going to see my keyboard, which has got some scuffs on it. I like it so much that I am taking it everywhere with me, so it's getting some battle scars. But this is a good thing. This is how all keyboards should be. They should be used. Okay, so one of the great things about this is the fact that I can sit there and browse directly in contact. So I've taken Ethereal Earth here, and I'm trying out sounds. And you can see here, oh, I like this one. So I'm setting that as a favorite. You can see the star. Now I want to go back to the star, load. I don't like that, but I like this one. This is really good. So I'm going to set this as another favorite. And auditioning libraries quickly like this is really, really useful. Let me find something we all know, heaviosity, damage, and now I can audition here. Oh, I like that. Now it's loading up on the screen. This is mapped out here, and you can see how close room, hall, LFE, the numbers on the screen have appeared down here. Now I can take a sound, I can go I can gradually, if I want to, by recording, I could... I can make a drum be... closer or further away, just on the fly. I can adjust all of these things. And if I want to, I can also start mapping things the way that I want. If I instead want to make the hall now here, I can make it so that now I've got the hall adjusting to my ribbon controller. You can do this sort of thing with any contact instrument. Okay, let's go and find native instruments. And we're going to go and find Ashlight. Here we go. So Ashlight, I really like Ashlight. So again, let's... I like that patch there. So I'm loading up on here. Now we can see it on the screen. You can see that it's mapped here, which is great because you can adjust all the controls here. And that's fabulous. Now, because I've mapped my pedals, I've got two pedals here. I can play left, right here with this pedal and go up, down with this pedal. 
So I can now do a chord. And that also allows me to now do things like this. Because I've got the extra inputs, I can now do the hybrid. I can adjust this here and use my pedals and use the pitch bend. If I wanted to map this to a particular control, it's very, very straightforward. So I just learn MIDI CC control. And now I've got my reverb mapped. If I sit there, you can see the is also adjusting here. So I can now have... And that's where this keyboard and the interface and so on comes into its own. You've got all of the controls at your fingers. The mouse is a great tool for doing this. It's not a great tool for feeling like you're performing. And what I like about this is it helps me be a performer. So I'm going to show you how you can map Poly Aftertouch and why I use it and why it's useful. So I've taken Uhe's Phenomenal Diva. You can see here we've got the cutoff. Now this is the patch as it... So you can see if I press down harder, nothing happens. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to map the filter to pressure. Now... I can actually get more expression out of each of these notes as I'm playing them. And that's because I'm using the poly after pressure to actually generate the response on each note. So we... Now if I change here, meaning settings, at the moment I've got poly after touch. If I set it to mono after touch, you'll see that as I play it and I press down, the whole chord responds, but by setting it to poly, I can now have it. I can allow a single note to have more control. And the, obviously things like the old CS80 uh, had this and it's part of the sound, but you can now map this to fabulous synths like Diva. Now, here's, we've got Generate, which is another seriously cool synth out there. I've got it hosted in complete control, and you can see that it's appearing here. I can now tweak controls over here as much as I want. But the problem I had with control two was that the touch strip was down here. And so I would often sit there and touch it by mistake because I use these wheels all the time. I'm here. And I'd be touching the touch strip by putting it up here. You're now keeping it out of the way of the controls. And by the way, these are really, really nice and solid, which I like. I've mapped it, and the way that you map it on here is you right-click and then you move the control you want. And I could choose to map a different one. This is why having the touch strip above is so much better. So I've, I've loaded Gravity 2. One of the great things and the thing that we all like is the fact that we can see the key switches up there. We can obviously tweak everything here, but we've also got the mapping down here. And it's the thing that I think most of us use most because I can see all my switches here. and map it into a nice region, and especially on an 88-note keyboard. The lighting on this is, is considerably better than it was. We spend so much time searching around for key switches. Still having them on the screen makes a huge difference. It's excellent. Finally, I've got to talk about the keybed. I've beaten my way through so many master keyboards and always kept coming back to my Yamaha CP300, and it's been replaced by this. I think the actual feel of the keyboard is great. I can't speak highly enough of the fact that the action feels just how I want it to be. The bottom line is, a keyboard has to be great to play. And this is a really excellent keyboard.
Keybed. It has the right balance for me in terms of working programming. Because it's got four pedal inputs, because it's got the strip, because of the way that the light works, it allows me to have a clearer creative line when I'm working. The demos that we can make now are so detailed and so amazing. Directors often don't turn up to scoring. The director often says, well, I've heard the demo. You're just effectively rendering the score with the orchestra. Now, to me, there is this magic when 105 people breathe in and out and all these ludicrously talented musicians play the music in that room. That's the magic. That's the special point. There is nothing more wonderful than standing up on the stand, waving your arms around like a given, and suddenly this music appears. Much as I'm pretty good with computers and music, I will hope that that never disappears.